Anjali Mohindra, thank you so much for coming into ITV no, News to you. talk to us. Um, so let's kick off. You've got a new role coming up, new drama series. Uh, tell us a bit about that. So I'm in a series called Dark Heart, um, which is about a lead detective called uh, William Wagstaff, who has a an unexplained, dark, mysterious past that he's trying to come to terms with. Uh, he has lost family in a way that he can't understand why and what happened to them. Um, so he becomes a detective and alongside trying to work through his own demons is trying to help get to the bottom of cases, uh, quite quite disturbing cases. And I play Josie Chancellor, who yeah. is his sort of like right hand woman, um, who's worked her way up the ranks. And you, we first meet her as a sort of rookie detective. Um, and then as the series progresses, she becomes more of his sort of support. And uh, he is a character that is, like I said, very dark but relies on the three women in his life, who is his on and off girlfriend, Sylvie, played by Miranda Rayson, his sister, um, played by Charlotte Riley, and then uh, me, Josie Chancellor, um, who is his sort of like work support. So he's propped up by these three very strong women, but he has no idea that they're doing all they can to help him out um, because he's just on a mission to get to the bottom of what's going on. Do you find it quite challenging to play that role or were you like, no, this is my sweet spot, I've got it? A bit of a mix, actually. Um, I think what I like about Josie is she's got a real massive heart and uh, is definitely the sort of good cop in certain interview, uh, uh, like interview se se sections with victims and with perpetrators as well. Um, but is has to hold her own to be taken seriously with what she does. So it's a really nice tug of war sort of thing to have compassion, but yet be like, don't sort of wreck with me. Uh, no, I love it. I love it so much. I, I think if I wasn't an actor, I probably would have wanted to be a detective. No way! It's probably not as glamorous as we make it really? look. Really? Um, well, not glamorous, but, you know, as, as seamless as we make it look. There's probably some horrible dark sides to it, um, which we do explore in the show. But, uh, yeah, I really, I just love that. Really? Cracking the code thing. It's wow. great. Wow. There's always time. Still yeah, time. there is time. There is time. <laughs> Side job, maybe. The night is young. <laughs> and weekend job. Yeah. Um, it sounds amazing. Obviously, we can't talk about your new role without talking about your old role. Yeah. Uh, Nadia from Bodyguard. I mean, it was astounding. More than 10 million viewers it pulled in on the, on the last yeah. um, viewing. And it's incredible. Are you getting recognised on the street now? Are you? No, not really. <laughs> I think I look very different. In fact, the only two times I've entered a conversation about Bodyguard outside of bringing it up myself or it being very openly spoken about was in an, once in an audition and the director saw on my CV that I'd been in Bodyguard and asked me if I was the character that spilt my coffee on the Home Secretary, which I was not. So he didn't recognise me, even though he'd seen it. And then uh, yesterday I went in for a different meeting and um, the receptionist was like, oh my God, you're Nadia. But I looked completely different again. So um, no, that was the only time somebody has recognised me. Yeah. She obviously was paying attention. She was paying attention, yeah. but I think Nadia is very different yeah. and holds herself very differently to how I hold myself. And um, yeah, I kind of have makeup and different clothes on. So, Do you, Were you surprised by the reaction that it generated? When you went into filming The Bodyguard, did you, did you know it was going to be this big or...? Um, I don't think you ever... I don't think you can ever really gauge how um, a piece is going to take off. So no, but I... I'm a huge fan of Jed Mercurio, um, who obviously made Line of Duty, and I've been a fan of that since the very first episode aired. Um, so I knew there'd be a buzz around it, but you, you just don't know what's going to happen. When you first read the role and you, you know, saw the script, what attracted to, Na to Nadia? Because I understand that you first turned the role down. So what kind of made you go, yeah, actually, I really want to do this? Um, I've covered this quite a lot. I, um, I could see that there were more complicit parties involved with um, with the terrorist acts that Nadia was involved in. And I just thought it felt closer to the truth than I felt other pieces, even the news sometimes uh, explores. Um, I just thought that is something that we need to think about a lot more, where a lot of the support and where the initial radicalisation comes from, where, those, where that sort of um, provocation can come from. Yeah. We really need to think about that. I think it's really, I think I'm learning more and more that the media, especially um, dramatised things, um, but all media is the first access that a lot of people have to working out um, how they feel politically about things and who perpetrators of certain issues are. Um, and I think for me, I wanted those audiences who have made up their opinions about certain racial groups to just have a little think about 
like I said, where some of this stuff actually stems from. Um, and I thought what it was trying to do was really interesting and I have a huge amount of respect for the people who created it as well and I just thought this, this, this is something I'd like to be involved in. Um, and like I said, you never know how a show's going to take off, but, and I'm an actor, not a spokesperson, but if you can be present in some of the conversations that come off the back of it and, and learn and, and grow with that and see how you can help to push things um, afterwards, then that's kind of a, all the power I feel like I have at my stage of my career. So, yeah. And you're right. So, so often with, with these stories, both in real life, um, I guess in real life, like you mentioned, the news and media, you see snippets of someone's life and then you make a judgment call on their whole you know, on their whole backstory based on the snippet that you've seen or whatever is reported. Um, and a lot of these cases, you know, they do have a backstory. People being marginalised, people being maybe shut out and, and, and misunderstood. Um, and, do, I mean, in terms of how you played Nadia, I mean, how did you approach, like, giving her that backstory? Did, did, you, did you want more of it in there? Or were you like, well, actually, I'll play her this way so that this th this kind of gets portrayed through her facial experience because you know um i just for those who are, st are still watching look away now because there's a spoiler alert there's a moment in the end where she goes from this submissive housewife to this you know i'm an engineer i'm a jihadi and you you see it and and that was a talking point and i came into the office the next day and we talked about it um how did you decide to play that because it's it's quite a shift in her story um i knew that there was going to be a twist and a new um, I didn't know who would be involved in that twist at all. Um, so when I read that, the, the final scenes of it, I guess, I guess um, a, I, to make the dis distinction really clear between a, somebody who is a political sort of presenter or a political spokesperson and then an actor, there's quite a massive gap between the two. And you can have interests in both and you can be one and have uh, be very vocal yeah. in the other area. But um, for me, I just do what I always do with any character. I, I look at them and try to understand them and not judge them. I've said this before that you don't judge, we don't judge ourselves. If we look back on our life and we think, oh, I was really mean to that person the other day, or, you know, I, I did this horrible thing. At the time of doing it, you didn't judge yourself. You just did, you just did it. So as an actor, the first thing a lot of actors are taught is to not judge your character and try to understand why they're doing what they do. Um, so I just did that really. and. Uh, created a backstory that I thought would um, give reasoning and balance and justification in her mind as to why she was doing the things she was doing. Do you, would you, if you, if you could go back now and rewrite any of the parts, I know you didn't write it, but <laughs> if you could, you know, approach the script, right, would you have given more of a backstory to her, do you think? Yes, I would have. Um, if I personally wrote it, I guess, and um, if I'm learning more and more every day, um, so yeah, if, if I was to have written it at any point, but also if I was to write it, if I was to be the writer of it now, maybe I would explore um, the things that I used in my backstory more for um, the story. But I think, I think that I keep saying it because I get asked it a lot, but as an actor, that's, that's not my, my job actually. My job is just to humanise the character on the page that is there already and um, will be there for whoever plays it. So, yeah, if I had that control with the conversations that we're having off the back of it and the growth that I'm going through as a human being, I think it's really important that people understand that behaviour because then they can disassociate it from the religion or racial background and, and see why any, how anybody could come to a place of trying to avenge people that they loved being killed in the way that presumably the people that she loved had been um, killed. Yeah, I think that would help people to understand that behaviour. And to understand the human side of it rather yes. than label them with, you know, X, Y or Z. Yeah. Were you, were you sort of, because I was monitoring, I was watching it and then I'd sort of monitor what people were saying on Twitter, on social media. Did that surprise, I mean, you must get that with shows anyway, but did that surprise you the level of conversation that Nadia generated? Um, it didn't, it didn't surprise me as such. I definitely felt when we were filming those scenes right at the end of the shoot that, um, that there was going to be a lot of conversation. It's hard to know until you've... God, there's a huge process that goes on between me being on set and filming something and it actually getting put on TV. There's editing and there's ADR and there's loads of things that happen to a piece. Um, also, you, you don't know from what angle they're going to feature that character's storyline. Who, who, who are they... Who, are they, who becomes the central piece in that, in that melee of scenes? Um, 
but when I watched it, I certainly was like, yeah, I can, I can totally respect and understand where a lot of these opinions are coming from and share some of them too, actually. Um, but I think it's only, we can only have change when certain things are being exposed and certain conversations are come off the back of things happening. It's only when things happen that you go, ah, I've got a strong feeling about that actually. And I can show you why I can actually illustrate it because it's right here. So I think the conversations that are coming off the back of it and the questions that are being asked of how Nadia could come across in a future project or piece, that's really important. We have to take that away from this, definitely. And I, and I, and I know, you know sometimes as, as a viewer, it's so hard to disassociate the actress from the character because you, you, know, you become the actress and you did such an amazing job, which is testament to how well you played Thank Nadia, you. that people kind of, did you feel like, oh, I need to defend this? Or were you like, no, you're actually, this is, this is your opinion and, you know, because because of the conversations that happened, because you said yourself, I have an opinion and I'd like to share it. Did you feel like you needed to defend? Um, I think defence is a really, like, isn't the right word to use in this case at all. Mm -hmm. I think I wrote the piece for Stylist, which um, then became my defence piece, even though it was never written yeah. defensively. I wrote before the last episode came out, actually. I wrote uh, about a month before, um, just purely because the show, I knew that uh, Nadia was in the... A handful of the first episodes but that that was going to be quite a massive moment and again I hadn't seen the last episode I didn't know how it would come across to the audience I didn't know what storylines would be m more sort of um powerful than the others until you see it all together like I said because a huge amount of stuff goes on in that edit um so I wrote that purely as an opinion piece um but it became my defense piece <laughs> and I think a lot of people took me writing that, defending why, I, defending why I'd taken the role, but I think I actually wrote it to, I don't know, to explain and track my journey in taking it. Um, I've learned a lot as an actress about press and about how things can get twisted. I actually um, was asked, when you read that last um, scene, when you saw that Nadia was not quite who we met in the first episode, yeah. did that empower you, was the question, and the answer, was yes. I yeah. mean, it's a yes and no yeah. answer to a very elaborate question. And I guess that could be taken in a lot of ways. And suddenly it became a sensationalist headline for quite a few um, papers had taken that to say that I found playing a jihadi empowering. And that's not quite what I'd said. Um, that's not quite what I'd agreed to when I said yes. What I meant was from a pe feminist perspective that um, being stronger than people assume you to be yeah. is empowering when people realise you're stronger. And that's literally all I meant by it. But I didn't quite realise, as I said, I'm learning and growing as an actress and a human being. We all are all the time. But I think I learned just how um, sensitive, but not only that, just, just how everything that comes out of my mouth can get taken in several different ways if it's not a recorded interview and it's a written interview. Um, so yeah, like I said, I don't feel like I need to defend my choices, um, but I think that uh, people have, are angry um, and I understand that completely and I understand that we all have a responsibility when we're in the arts but um, I really am focusing and taking a lot of um, I'm taking I'm taking a lot of hope for our industry from the conversations that are happening off the back of it yeah. and um, yeah I'm definitely like up for being a part of those yeah. and pushing that conversation forwards yeah. but I don't feel like I need to defend myself absolutely and and you know at the end of the day I think you know like you said, and I, I do want to come on to that stylist piece in a bit, um, but before we do, I think what you say about it generated a conversation. Yeah. Um, and, you know, going forward, what, what do you think? Because, you, you know, you, you, you mentioned yourself, there is a lot of anger and you understand why people feel angry and, and maybe why they vented in, you know, in, in the aftermath of that. And what, what in your mind, because you look at, there's so many industries that play into that anger. You've got the media, you've got entertainment, you've got politics. I mean, there is a, there's lots going on. From your perspective as an actress, what, what do you think is a solution to kind of move the conversation forward around um, radicalization, around stereotypes, you know, it's big words that have a lot of mean different things for different people. Um, what, you know, for you personally, what would you think is a, a good way to move the conversation forward? Um, I think in, in some interviews, people will say, what would you do differently? <laughs> Which again is a really strange uh, a question to ask an actor because I feel like I'm, I'm a 
watercolour in a tray of watercolours. I'm, I'm, I'm a specific hue, I guess, and a painter paints a picture and uses a specific pink and I happen to be that pink. It's like asking the pink paint how they feel about the piece um, once, it's, once it's been painted. Um, but when people are saying, what would, what would you do differently if you, had, if you had the power and if you'd written it? Um, I, guess, I guess taking things, um, taking on board that understanding a human's behavior it can help with understanding why it happens. I think that's, that's something that I would push for yep. if I was in the position, in, in a position like this in the future. I think that's what I've learned. Um, but I think, I think people being vocal as they are really does challenge things that people didn't realise um, were an issue, I think. There have been conversations, I think Jed Mercurio is now actively uh, having conversations with Act for Change. I think that's a brilliant thing to come off the back of this. Yes. I have a lot of respect for him for being open to that and a lot of respect for them for being so vocal about it and taking on everybody's um, different opinions and, and, and handling those brilliantly. Um, yeah, I think the uh, championing of writers from different backgrounds is definitely something I'm seeing a lot more of. I think actors being proud of their own heritage and and um, and the openness of the industry that it, it, we are far behind, I know. And I say we, because I'm a part of it. I'm not at the helm of those changes, but I see that I am a part of it. I think, um, yeah, the openness to try and reflect different communities now. Um, even using the word diversity, people are like, okay, diversity says that we're all different, which we are, but actually what we should be focusing on is representation yeah. and inclusivity. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, I, I guess things like that that are happening, I'm, I'm all for, and, and let's hope that they continue in the direction that they're going in. Absolutely, I couldn't agree with you more. And talking about representation and diversity, uh, one of the things you did mention was how the role brought you self uh, acceptance, you know, <laughs> and uh, you know, one of the I, I read that piece, and um, for any of you who haven't read it, it you know it talks about your heritage, your family. Um, how did you find it breaking into the industry as an Asian actress? Because I imagine um, we were we were chatting earlier. It's like two different worlds almost, you know. Um, how did you find it? Sort of finding your way, finding your initial first steps. Um, so just really quickly, the, I, uh, again, uh, headlines are really useful because they kind of get people interested in reading the piece. I wouldn't say that that role. Um, was pivotal in me accepting myself. I think it. Uh, I think they're slightly different things. I think the industry's changed quite a lot now. Um, again, I talk about this in stylist quite a lot, but um, my first agent, um, who was incredible, actually had suggested uh, that I put white as my um, my ethnicity, and I didn't think anything of it. I actually was like, yeah, absolutely, I want to be playing the parts. Yeah. That are written for white actors because yeah. I can see that they're the ones that are nuanced and the ones that feel like who I am. Yeah. Um, but now it's like declaring who you are is something that every, I think, and I can see that every drama school graduate who is from an other background is doing. And that says so much about where this industry is going. Um, so yeah, I think the industry's changing. I think I'm growing up. I think that, um, so, God, not to like use this as therapy, but like, I think some of the issues I had as a child from my own personal experiences, which I've heard from loads of people that they share through their own unique circumstances, but being a, the only ethnic minority kid in a school of 2000 and navigating my way through that and the, the things that that might have affected in my own personality and the way I see myself, um, I now feel really proud of my heritage and I'm really embracing it. And I think that comes with age, but I also think that comes with a world that's evolving in the way that it is. Um, social media is bringing us all so much closer. Yeah, yeah. And huge, amazing films like Crazy Rich Asians and um, Black Panther and things mm. like that, they're really making people feel proud of who they are. And I, I think films are now being made, things are coming off the back of that, you know? Yeah. Feeling comfortable in your own skin and realizing that's something to be really, really proud of. Uh, is affecting me too. Absolutely, and I think you know um, one of the uh, stories I think that you told uh, was you know opening up your um, Indian pack lunch um, and people reacting to that. And I, I, I mean, I, I've had that as a kid growing up here, just you know bringing samosas into school wasn't a big. Looking back now, wasn't a big deal, but people reacted, and, and maybe they didn't react negatively, but still the reaction has always sort of stuck in the back of my mind. How did you sort of find, so for any of like, you know, young actresses watching you now and watch this piece when it gets shared on social media, how did you find that confidence to overcome, 
any differences that you felt at that point in time, you know, as a young girl growing up? Uh, I think it's in solidarity, actually. I think it's when you realise that there was nobody to share that experience with um, when I was in that British Forces school in um, Germany. There was nobody that I could be like, oh my God, do you feel like this too? Great, there's two of us. That means I'm not crazy. <laughs> um, I think I think it's in sharing experiences and realising that, God, I have this really like clear image of like a Venn diagram of like British and other. And in the middle of that is uh, where I where I think I I am where, where I am, and it was a little it's a little place that I thought was a place to hide in. But mm. I'm realizing that place is full of incredible people, incredible celebrities, um, but also incredible human beings. Like I don't mean human beings aren't celebrities, but people that just do everyday jobs. And actually, that little tiny intersection of the Venn diagram is actually a banqueting hall that we are all so proud to be in now. And it's actually a really important space um, that we can all share our, and I say, I've said this before, that the, the, the microaggressions and experiences that we all face as different marginalised communities within that, I'm not saying they're all like, we could sweep through them with general brush strokes, but the fact that we all feel British and other is exciting. And I think, uh, I think in talking about our experiences together and realising that we're actually, we're all feeling a little displaced means that hopefully in, in being in that, banqueting hall we feel like ah oh, this is our place this little place here and we should shout about it absolutely anyone like was there anyone in your family or any any mentors that sort of pushed you through to give you the confidence to go for acting because I mean I assume going for auditions and you, you must face a lot of rejection and you must get told a lot about how you look or how you sound I mean there's a lot of that's just the nature of the industry right yeah. so um was there one thing that somebody told you that's always stuck with you to be like no I'm going to keep going oh god uh my whole family are quite tenacious, but my um, we call my mum the Adidas woman because she doesn't genuinely thinks nothing is impossible. Like you could be late for. I remember when I had my first ever job, I'd sometimes be like five minutes late for it, and I'd be like, "Mum, I'm late. You you've come late to to take me to to work." I was lucky that she drove me, but she'd be like, "No, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you there. I'm, like, I'm, all, I'm already five minutes late." Like this just shows my my mum's incredible like strength and tenacity. But she's just she's never ever doubted that it would be a possible thing for me to do but has she gives me strength when I lose it myself sometimes which yeah I think anybody in the arts and a lot of different industries your confidence comes in waves but whenever I hit a low I just call her and I feel like I'm what does she tell you then what does she tell me yeah give us give, she's oh she's just like um she believes she's a huge believer in creating your own destiny. Mm. Like, so she's like, well, why can't you do it? Why don't? Sometimes she'll say things like, why don't you call that casting director or that director and just be like, I want another chance. And I mean, you can't do that, obviously. But yeah. it's just that there is, there isn't a no. She makes me feel like there isn't a no, and you've got nothing to lose. And when you realise that the only thing you have to lose is that little part of yourself that, you know, might be like, you shouldn't have done that. Then, go for it. Yeah. Absolutely, and I'd love to have your mum on the line. Every yeah, time I, I wish I could give you some of her <laughs> statements, but it's more in just her body language and the way that she comes across. It's more in her just like single-minded drive that, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, it sounds amazing. And, you know, obviously, you know, you said you growing as an actress, um, if you could kind of see your 10-year-old self at school now, anything you would tell her? Oh, just um, own who you are. Like, like I said, the world is changing and um, being different is an amazing thing like it's an amazing outfit that you can wear or an amazing thing that you can buy in that it's in this material world that we live in it's the most amazing unique thing that you have to you and just oh my god share it and celebrate it and and own who you are because um if you can learn to accept and love yourself the amount that that will give you as a person is just in any profession in any space it's it's invaluable I love that. I know who you are. I'm going to yeah. take that into my weekend. <laughs> um, and, you know, looking broadly at the industry, um, actresses watching you and, and, and tracking your career. And, and obviously you'll be a huge inspiration for people who, who want to go in and might feel like, actually, I don't have what it takes or, or maybe lacking that confidence. Um, the industry, like you say, has gone through a lot of shift. I mean, one of the biggest movements, I think, to come out of it, it was the Me Too movement. Um, anything that went through your mind when you were watching that? I mean, just kind of unfurl both across the, across the pond. In, in America, but also here, there were some stories that came out. Anything that, as an actress, that you were looking at, were like, actually, I'm, I'm glad that this is sort of coming out and moving us forward. Um, um, I think it it's always a shame when things like Me Too happen, 
because you're like, God, I can't believe it's 2018 and we're only just starting to do that. But on the flip side, thank God it's finally happening. Oh my God, yes, this is just, I think I, every woman I've spoken to that saw that stuff unfold, so pretty much everyone, felt a sense of empowerment and unity and solidarity and um, the conversations that it started is just incredible. Um, yeah, I, I mean, oh, I just, my skin tingles when I think about it. And separate to the Me Too stuff, whenever you, like, when I watched the all-female Ghostbusters or mm. watched um, Wonder Woman, just that feeling of, like, you just don't realise how we're conditioned until you see a change. Seeing women kick ass and rule a film or seeing people have these conversations and, and just kick down doors and, and open up conversations, it's just like, wow, God, I can't believe how we're made to feel from a very, very young age. Like, we're not, we shouldn't... Uh, to celebrate women makes you, like, this brass-swinging, weird, radical person. Yeah. But actually, you're like, oh, my God, what? Yes. And it's actually seeing the men's reactions to things like yeah. this. Oh, right, OK. They... F they f uh, my boyfriend and other male friends, that's like, they like, oh, my God, this... Oh, it starts conversations that you felt like you couldn't start, and it makes them feel like they can open up about stuff that they felt, but they were like, I don't know how to address this conversation, but actually, there's a language there for me to use now, and there's a conversation... St I said the word conversation probably a hundred times in this, but... Um, yeah, I know how to access this particular topic now. That's 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 just the mo most moving thing for me. Absolutely. And is that coming from like male actors or just men in general? Or just being men in general. If we can't talk about something because we don't know what language to use and how to use our words that don't come across as like inclusive or exclusive, um, how can how can men enter those conversations? Not just actors, but any men. It's, so Me Too has opened up a way for people to speak freely from the heart and just open up with each other, open up to each other and, and try to be better as well. I think that's the thing that struck me too, is just men going, how can I, I now, I can see the yeah. issues now and I know how I can be better in situations where I'm not directly involved in yeah. certain things, but I know how I can address those now. Yeah. And have you sort of seen that shift then among like casting directors and, and people that in your, you know, your circles have you seen that shift after um, Me Too sort of started coming over here like people opening up? Yeah I think the initial reaction was um, some men around me have gone okay I mustn't speak to young women over there because it might um, you know oh god I've got to be careful mm -hmm. which is <laughs> irritating but then I think that was the initial sort of like oh are we all which is a sad Byproduct, but then I definitely have felt that that sort of eased off, and now it's actually made things easier. Because when you put those boundaries there, everybody can see them and knows where they are, and they can act more freely within that space. It's when there aren't any boundaries, men can't see the. When people don't know how we feel, they don't know how to to be around you, and I think it's yeah, I think it's made things much more clear. Absolutely, and um, do you think you know for? young women coming up now behind you, you know, young, young girls uh, saying, I'm going to go to drama school, I'm going to be an actress. Do you think things are more open now for them than they were for you? So that's separate from the um, stuff we've just been talking about. Yeah, but yeah no, certainly. I, I really, I'm seeing quite a vast amount of um, ethnic minority actors and actresses coming through, um, coming into the industry. And I, I think that's because there's more work and I think that's because it's clearer that that it can be a, a real career path yeah. and not something that you have you have to go and do the degree that will back you up and then you can go to drama school you yeah. know I think I think there's more work there more stories being told what else needs to be done do you think to like get more of those people in on screen behind the screen script writers you know all, all of that that goes into inclusion and representation like you said what more do you think needs needs to happen um I think when the stories are there, written and created by ethnic minority writers and producers, I think then that brings with it a surge, a surge of sto a, yeah, a surge of stories, and then the need for the actors performing them. So I think if we continue to champion those writers as much as we can and and that give them the opportunities in in larger amounts, I think that brings with it all of the rest. Brilliant. And last few questions. Future for you? Can we expect to see you in films coming up? Are you? you what else? What, what else can we expect to, expect to see from you? 
Uh, so I play a really cool character in um, the new series of Legends of Tomorrow, which is right. um, a US TV series, uh, like a superhero show, mm -hmm. um, where I play a true punk from the 60s. Nice. Really exciting. That's going to be out <laughs> soon. And um, I worked with Mark Gatiss on um, a ghost story that he, it's an original script that he wrote and also directed me and, and an amazing actor called Simon Callow. Uh, who I'm sure a lot of people know and respect already, but he's brilliant in it and we had so much fun filming it and it's going to be out around Christmas time, so. Brilliant. Yeah. Sounds exciting. Series two for Bodyguard, maybe? Oh, who knows? Who knows? Never say no. Never say never. Angie Mahindra, thank you so much for chatting to us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you.